Let's now look at some problems with privatizing the supply of water to private homes. Keep in mind that in the material on water privatization, even when it's superior to government provision, privatization seems to underperform relative to expectations. And let's think about why that might be the case. Much of the discussion on privatized water focuses on some very general issues, such as whether private water suppliers take sufficient care to protect the environment or look out for the interests of poor water consumers. To be sure, these are important issues and we will cover them in other units. But the key question here is simply whether it is possible in the first place to create a well-functioning market in water. And let's look at that in a little more detail. One problem is this. If the quality of government-provided water previously had been low, it's also likely to be the case that the quality of government regulation of the private water supplier is going to be low as well. What does that mean more concretely? It means that the private water supplier is probably in quite a good position to bribe the government regulator or otherwise influence or lobby the government water regulator, and in essence that water regulator will allow the private company to act as a privileged monopolist. The private water company will use its privileged position to keep out competitors and to enforce an unfair, unfair deal on the market. Very often this is what happens, and it's one reason why water privatization does not in every case lead to a real competitive or lower price or higher quality outcome. The second problem is that the private company doesn't always have sufficient incentive to invest a lot of resources in improving the water system. And think about why this is the case. Let's say you're a private company, you come in, you have a contract to supply water, and you do a lot to improve the system. You're afraid that at the end of the term of the contract, what the government will do is confiscate the improvements and assets you have made, and you will end up not turning much profit from those investments. Knowing this in advance, the company, of course, is afraid to invest. The confiscation can take many forms. It may simply be a lower price. So let's say the company and the government strike a deal where the company agrees that it will improve the water system by, say, fixing pipes, and in return it expects to be able to charge a higher price for, say, 20 years. The possibility is that the improvements will be made, and then five years into the bargain, there's a new government elected or the government changes its mind, and all of a sudden the higher price is not allowed, and a lower price is imposed on the company, and that too reflects a form of implicit confiscation of the investment. You'll note this is quite different from the fear of corruption discussed a moment ago. In fact, if the system is corrupt, it may in some ways increase the chance that the water company can get a rate of return on its investments in improving the water system. Finally, a big problem with private water supply is that it can be very hard to charge the relevant customers. Imagine individuals living in a shanty town, perhaps illegally. There's no title to the land. There's no formal registry of the address. And of course, these families will tend to be very poor. You can supply them with water, build a pipe to their house or to their shanty, but then the time comes to collect on the bill. What happens if that family simply doesn't pay? What is it you do? You can't bring a lawsuit against them very easily. In a lot of these countries, the courts are clogged with lawsuits, and it can take years and years, and maybe by that point the family has moved on. And even if you won the lawsuit, what is it you could take from the family? Probably their savings are zero or very close to zero. In other cases, a government is simply unwilling to engage in the kind of strong-arm tactics using, say, the police, legal, and court system that would allow water companies to collect upon their bills. So you take all of these issues and you put them together, and what you find very often is an equilibrium where the water company knows it will be hard to charge customers. Customers would expect that they would take the water and then not pay, and what ends up happening is that water supply is never extended to all of the eligible poorer communities in the first place. And these are just some of the reasons why it can be very hard to operate a well-functioning market in private water supply piped into private homes.